Hypersonic travel is something that is on the docket. It's a little more non-trivial compared to supersonic, okay? So in order to get into that, there's some fundamental physics involved that I think is very, very cool. Let's talk about the Mach number. It's yes. the ratio of the speed of your object divided by the speed of sound. At the end of the day, the, the air behaves differently when you are traveling at close to or above the speed of sound. The pressure waves, the, the, the disturbances that you're creating with your object are gonna move away from your object at the speed of sound. That's what sound is. Sound is the speed at which some disturbance moves through air. But if you're piercing through that barrier, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. then the disturbance is sort of catching up with you and you're piling up air in front of you. Mm. And air goes from something called incompressible, an incompressible fluid, which is a way, a way of saying that basically air doesn't change its density as we change its pressure and temperature. Right, right. Now you can squish air, okay? And the wavefront of all of that disturbance becomes a nice little conical wavefront, yeah, yeah, like yeah. right around the device that's going through yeah, yeah, yeah and you're getting that really nice mock cone right right and the angle of that cone tells you how fast you're going uh so like it'll it'll like like it'll be wider or more narrow based based on, on how fast you're how going fast it's kind of like the wake on a boat right it's the S same same, same, same. so that's the pressure wave that you get when you go supersonic so okay we've gotten to supersonic right yes then there's something called hypersonic the yes. definition of hypersonic is greater than mach 5 so okay. five times the speed of sound and there the air behaves even more differently, okay? The physics turns into a different animal altogether. What ends up happening is the physics of the air starts mattering. When you get to hypersonic, then you start caring about what is the air made out of? Yes. It's not point-like particles. Most of it is nitrogen and oxygen. Okay. And those are diatomic particles, okay. right? Yeah, diatomic yeah, yeah. Molecule, molecules. Yes. So diatomic molecules means you've got two atoms, Nitrogen is an N2, oxygen is an O2. Yep. And those guys have other degrees of freedom. They don't just move. They also vibrate mm -hmm. and they also rotate. So there's other ways in which energy can affect them. And so the ways in which they interact themselves and with each other. And with the object. And with the object. Start mattering. Because there's, there's, just, there's more complexity now at when we're starting to get into above Mach 5. Above Mach 5, because the energy scales correspond now, the kinetic energy that you're putting into the air is now at the same regime the, as the energy of this and, and, and the, the energy rotate. of this. Yes. Physics is always about energy scales. Got it.